bricks and you can get to them in a garage or something. You take them outside and you can cook. You find twigs, you can cook. While if you don't have this, you can't go inside to cook. You can't eat, mm -hmm. right? You have to wait for emergency services to come and help. Okay, so I'm going to How many start bricks are you? 26. 26 bricks. <laughs> and this, I want, this is pine pitch. I just went and got it off of pine tree over there. That'll burn like gasoline. So, what we do also is we collect all of our pine cones at the house. Also, clean your teeth. Need it. Bags and bags of pine cones. And we use them to start fires on our wood cook stove. You don't need to add no oil or diesel or nothing. Kerosene is what we use back home, right? Start that's your lighter. That's your lighter. Yes. So, how do you collect that pine pitch? Yeah, how do you collect it? You just go find you, you need, you gotta have a pine tree. And you've seen a pine tree bleed, the, yeah, the sap? Yeah. Okay, that's the, that's the resin thank from you, it. Thank you, thank you. Oh, you want to take my pine cone? Can I just find one? Sorry. Usually back home, if I was fishing this class on our property, I used pine cone. Here, yeah, there's not very many, we found a few. So, okay. this is... Okay, give it a pitch. I have, I have. Can we drop them in? No, I'm gonna light. I'm gonna light okay. so they can see. Oh, Show them how the pitch lights. Okay. So we're gonna see how the uh, pine pitch is going to do. Look at them. Oh, nice. There you go. Very flammable. <laughs> pine pitch. Okay, so now I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna use that to light this. And pine cones have pine sap, so they, they light up flammable. Quick, very funny. So I'm gonna drop that in there. Sure. We hope this works. As we said, you do not need firewood. All you need is twigs. Okay? Um, it's coming up. They had bark. My younger brother, he married a former woman. So what I'm going to cook on this today is scrambled tofu. I will have a season and I'm going to um, saute the onions, the garlic, and the peppers and then I'm going to put tofu in it. What did you use to start the fire? Pine pitch <laughs> and Cheers. pine cones. Cheers. Here we go. Oh, with a lighter? Yeah. Oh, okay. How often yes, do you have to place the wood yes. in there? The, the sticks? How, How often? often? You have to watch your flame. You have to watch your keep flame and you have to keep feeding it. And then the back, you have a little hole in the back also. Oh, the opening. That's how you um, activate. So you have to keep kind of cleaning it because they actually accumulate right. to make the fire breathe, okay? So there we, there it is. So we have. So remember, this goes this way because my brick is here. I don't want it to get hot. If I put it here, it's going to get hot. Okay? Um, where's the tofu? It's just stuff for tofu. Brian. <laughs> I don't know where Brian's at. <laughs> I don't know. He said he had everything over. Hey, Abby. Abby, do you know where Brian has the tofu and everything? Uh, if you run over, please. If he brought it up here. Where did he leave it? He said he had it in the woods. Here. Here. No, that's Let me go out That's not, is that someone else's where bag? Someone's carrying it. No, that's not ours. That's not ours. All right. While that heats up, because we don't have the stuff here for some reason, he has it, but I don't know where he put it. I'm going to start explaining about the Dutch ovens. So we have two Dutch ovens here. They're both 12 inch Dutch ovens. They come in 8 inch, 10 inch, 12 inch, and 14 inch. This, these are 12 inch. How do you know the size? They mark right there, okay? Mm -hmm. So these, the, I have banana bread in here mixed. So these Dutch ovens have legs. They have legs because what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack. When I cook them, I'll put one on top of the other. Um, why use a Dutch oven? Your food will cook quick. Unbelievable. You want to see what I have on the other one? Potatoes, onions, garlic, rosemary, 
Not that in there. Okay. Cooking lunch. <laughs> Do what? You cooking lunch. I'm cooking lunch. Yeah. It's about to be lunch. Yeah. It's gonna be, I don't know, supper now. No, I'm not really. Okay, so we have the briquettes there. Um, where did my husband go? He took my phone. Yeah. So, I'm using briquettes this time, but you can actually uh, make your own charcoal to cook on a Dutch oven. You will have to practice. I'm teaching I you the your own charcoal. Yeah, you can burn your wood and just get the coals from there and use it to cook on the Dutch oven coals, okay? So, um, let me keep this going. Just bringing the goodies now. You can feed the fire from the top or from the side? Yes, you can yeah. feed it from the side. Oh, yeah. And if the smoke follows so any, you, anybody wants to feel privileged. It only follows beautiful people. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> very hot, so that already. Still, it's very hot. It's not good for you. Oh, from the bottom, okay. Where is it? Yeah, okay. So you can put a lid on it um, to make it cook fast, okay? Um, you want to see the flame? Let me know, okay? Can you see the flame in there? Yes. Okay. Why is the color rocket stove? Does anybody know? It's fast. And it makes the feel quiet. The sound. It makes a sound. Oh, part of, you know what part of the reason for this is? Because you could find some bricks and you could find twigs. You don't have to have any tools to do this. See, before I built it, I made sure where the wind was coming and going from. Wind's coming from a direction and it's blowing. If I would have built this in the back, I would have to be blowing on it to keep it going, okay? So think about that. We've made that mistake before we teach it. And we can't keep it going. So we learn every time we teach it. So you have to put it in the opposite direction of the... You want the wind to be going into the big hole. Otherwise you have to take something once, and blow it. Once it's going away, once you get it good and hot, it takes a while to get those bricks hot on the inside. Once they're hot, it, it will do the natural gravity thing. But it's best if you, you've got wind to use it. You can choke it if you put too much. So I just, I just had it choke. Okay, that's good. And the kids love helping with this. They just love getting, you know, we had them this morning gathering the twigs and putting the hoods. I mean, hood just remember, the these bricks get hot, so make sure they're not touching the bricks because these get really hot. And you need a flat surface. A lot of times you just use your concrete of a driveway or a road. But, I mean, that we use just eight bricks on the bottom. So any questions so far? Even though you have spaces, I don't see a problem. Is there a problem? Is there a difference? Spaces. Yeah. Um, no. 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 I thought it was going to be, but it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the I mean, there's yeah. a better, but it's it still a tighter fit. Mm -hmm. So and especially it's warmer here like if you were in the middle of winter it would make more of a difference because it wouldn't be, it'd be as hot so i don't want to overcook um my veggies so i'm just going to leave um so what you did with tofu and um that just that's the yeah, it's very firm. Yeah, That's why I usually mix it with this softer one, but I forgot. Okay. I'm going to leave you with this, cooking this. Okay. And my, my um, briquettes are ready for the Dutch oven. So this is what, this is what we're going to do.
So for the for the Dutch ovens, if you have a 12 inch Dutch oven, you're gonna times that by two, okay? So 24, so we need 24 <coughs> briquettes. 24 briquettes, 24 charcoal, right? Okay, okay so a third of 24, how much is a third of 24? About eight, right? Okay. So if you want a 350 degree oven, because you can't turn a knob, right? You're gonna control your heat with the briquettes. So if you want a 350 degree oven, you have to use a third of the whole amount. So I have, I have this 24. I, this is a 12 inch pot. I'm gonna use 24 briquettes. So let's let's put aside 24. A third of that is gonna be eight. That's 300, that's 350 degrees, we said, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm going to put the potatoes on the bottom. And the potatoes, it's a bunch of them, and I want a 400 degree oven. So each one of these will add 25 degrees to your oven. Okay? So instead of eight, how much am I going to put? Ten. I'm going to put ten. I'm going to put ten. to add more because you're going to think that's not going to cook. No way. We're going to find out. Okay? So remember, if I want to add another 25, because I said I have a lot of potatoes, look, so, and, and then there's wind, and it's not as hot here than in Tennessee. In Tennessee, I would just add 10, 10 briquettes. I'm putting right now 11. Yes? Could you go over those numbers again? Yeah. 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 Okay, I'll explain. Let me put them to start cooking, and then we'll explain again. So, it was 24 briquettes, we put 8 in the bottom, how much do we have on top? How much do we have left? Oh, I guess it's 16. 16. 16, so we're going to put 16 on top. We made it a 400 degree oven, right? Yeah. So how many more briquettes do I need to use? This is 350 degrees right here. We need two more briquettes because it's 25 degrees in each. So? You put the extra two on top. Yes. So now we're going to put our other oven on top of the oven. How many go on top? You got quite a bit of breeze, so it's going it's to yeah. change the way it cooks. Watch All out right. your phone. How many minutes? So, it's 
It's going to take about an hour. An hour? About an hour to cook the potato. It's going to take less time to cook this because it's less amount than this bread. Okay, but the potatoes are going to take about an hour. Around 45 minutes to an hour. We just have to check. If we have less potatoes, um, I cooked some before we left on our trip. And it was like 45 minutes. It, it would be smart to put the stuff that's going to cook faster on top, right? Yeah, you want to. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You just can't tear it down, too. <laughs> so you have these little, these are called rivets right here. You set your lid on when you're... You set your lid on it. Um, and you have these that are to lift them up. And, and oh. the is not Now these pots have the little feet. You notice it has little feet. If you're cooking on a wood cook stove, you want to use the, the ovens, the, the pots that do not have any feet. Like that, that pan is flat, it doesn't have feet. That can go straight on a wood cook stove or any, 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 any stove. But these that have feet have to bake like, like this. Now if you want to, let's say you want to bake a cake and you don't want to put your cake directly in, in the pot like I just did with that banana bread, you can use some little, um, bolts nuts for, for you know that nuts you put four of them and you put your cake your round cake pan in there with your with your batter and then you cook okay so any questions can you go over the numbers yes <laughs> if you're i have two dutch ovens here each one of them is 12 inch so if it's 12 inch, you times that by two. So 12 times two is 24. That means you need 24 briquettes, 24 charcoal. To get to 350. Yeah. To get to a 350 degree oven. So one third of the 24, so you're gonna divide that 24 and three, that's eight, right? Mm -hmm. That's gonna go in the bottom. One right. third's gonna go in the bottom. Okay. And then the, the other three, Four of it's gonna go on top, and then this one I didn't get have 24 for this one because I already have the heat from the other ones. So I'm just taking advantage of the heat. I could add a 10 inch oven on top here and cook something else on it. Um, or if you want warm water or something, I could just you can just stack them up. You know, keep adding. So we have 14 inches, but we decided to bring the 12 inches because they're heavy. But these, how many of you use these pot, this pots and pans at home? Does any one of you use these pots and pans? Okay. Okay, what are the advantages of using these pots and pans? So Guess time. It, on our camp, we use it for camping mainly. Okay. And we did potatoes this morning and it cooks really fast. Yes, okay. yeah. the food cooks really quick. Therefore, you save on gas or on wood, electricity. Um, they're easy to clean. People say, oh no, but they get all rusty. And I, I, I want to throw them away, so just throw them in my, in my front yard and I'll pick yeah. them up. You know, they get rusty if you don't know what to do with them. When you get done cooking and you take your food, you know, you, if you have leftover food, you have to transfer it to another container because then it tastes like iron. So you get your iron from this too. So you immediately take your food out. And what you do is you wash it and you put oil. I just put people, yeah, you see it all in the bottom and on top, and then you store them like that. They stay beautiful. Um, they're non stick, they're non stick stuff, don't stick to it. Um, you, you, uh, the only thing is that they're heavy, but that's what I love. You know, I, I well, they, three they distribute kitchen. the heat more evenly because of how heavy they are. Yes, they maintain the heat and distribute the heat. Yes. Like, what, well, because what were we this morning? We were using this to um, toast uh, bagels and I was the last person and the fire wasn't still on. It was on a propane stove. The fire hadn't been on for a bit. And I said, oh, we'll just put it in there. And I put in there, I was like, oh yeah, well, it'll get a little bit warm. And it's a good thing I checked it because if I had left it in there too long, it actually would have burned the, the middle of the bagel. And it hadn't been on for a bit. So, um, with this, if you want to cook in a Dutch oven like this, your lid has to have this little, you know, 
have tongue on the side to keep it whole because the other lid go like that, they go down, so they won't hold your charcoal, your, your, your coal there. They um, live like this. Yeah, yeah it, like that. It can, it can still be done, um, but you got to stack all your charcoal right up here, and it might take away from the heat around the edge. This one we're going to use to make charcoal. So that we have dedicated that one to charcoal. That's why it looks like rusty. But I think that's ready now. Probably. I'm not smelling it because I'm smelling the smoke down so here. So if you live in the country, you don't smell like smoke, you're not doing country living yet. <laughs> <laughs> you're just living in the country. You're not doing country living yet. You have to smell like smoke. Okay? Um, any questions? Everybody understood or nobody understood? <laughs> Either or. Very clear. Very okay. Clear. Very clear. Okay, thank you. Um, I can't feel the heat really come up. Oh, okay. Okay, so if you have a 14 what about that inch, side? this is a test. No, if you have 14 inch oven, how many briquettes you need? 28. From those 28, how many are going to go at the bottom? One third. One third. One third. Which is? Nine and a third. How about nine? How about nine or ten? Depends on what you're cooking. Like if you're making lasagna, I would not put ten. I would stay with nine. If you're, if you're making you know, pasta because it cooks quick. But if you're making potatoes, which is harder, if you're making soup, it will cook quick. So you don't need you know, to add. What do, you, what do you do if you're bad at math? <laughs> Make sure you have your iPhone. <laughs> not the calculator, your iPhone. Pile it up, get used to burnt food. <laughs> well done. If you're hungry, hey, you just memorize the stuff. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, my husband, I think he's hungry. So he's doing something that we shouldn't do. He's adding all of those foods all around him. Okay? So, More is always better. <laughs> well, here yeah, now that you can have the same problem with this. Yes. So like, make, I, you know, if you're in, if you're into engines and racing, I used to be years ago, way too much horsepower and just. Mm -hmm. and, and with this, if you put too much in there, you'll see it start smoking more and more. That means it's choking. It's actually burning really well in there right now. You can't see it, but I can see it through the corner here. So if you're putting too much wood in you. If you get a lot of smoke, you better make sure that, that you got air coming in on this little side and uh, make sure that you're not choking out your fire because you don't, when it's burning well, you don't get as much smoke. I can see the flame in there burning and you don't see much smoke right now at all. Okay. Uh, I probably just the, this the one has to be that tall? Hmm? Yes, it needs to be this tall, yeah. You want... Um, what is it? Seven layers? One, two, three, four, five. You need that chimney effect. Yeah. You need that draft. Yeah. That's where the heat heats up all the bricks and you're directing the heat into your pot at the top. So you need... Seven layers. Yeah. 26 bricks. 26 bricks. 26 ladrines. Yeah. But they have to be there. And these... these not the hollow ones. Not the thin and wet. The ones with don't. You don't want the ones with the holes in the middle of the bricks. Oh. You want the ones with the solid. Solid, solid. solid. And that's not including these ones on the bottom are not part of the 26. Like you, you would do that just on on the on your concrete or your road or whatever, something solid underneath it. But since we're doing it on the grass, we put these other extra bricks on the bottom. That, that one can also suffer heat. Like you were saying this morning, if you make in the winter. To heat the bricks, you have to put in the winter. Yeah. 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 No, because you're going to have the smoke inside your house. No, you don't want the smoke inside your house. No, that would not work for that. That's just a, a stufa rapida. It's a quick stove. It's a rocket stove, you know, so just, you cook something see, real quick is, and then... See how this is steaming? And so I don't know if you timed that, but I don't know. I think that... Show her the bucket. She wants to see the job in the Oh. Solo pedacitos. You can gather those all from around any woods you could gather. 
and you wouldn't have to have a, an axe to chop them up or anything. And there's different kinds of rocket stoves. You can go on YouTube and you can see the different ones built with different materials. Yeah. I find this one to be the easiest, way. Yeah. The last, the last camp that, the last camp they had that I helped with, a guy came and he had a rocket stove that he bought on Amazon that was made for taking backpacking. So obviously you're not going to backpack with all these. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, but he had one that... Yeah. Um, he was just trying to block and make more buildings go up and do this. That's, that's just his little add-on he just did. That just makes more heat go into the pot instead of go out around. But you have to have at least one opening. These air spaces? Well, we hadn't done it before with these air spaces, but it seems to be working just fine. You saw how it Normally, we have like, one brick we use are pretty new bricks instead of old ones, so they're all like exactly. And there's no air. But, you know, it seems to work. You can feel the heat here, and you can see. So what happens if you open it? What happens if we open it right now and take a peek? Huh? You're gonna lose some heat, so it's gonna take longer to cook. So we might as well just wait. Or the cake will fall. Well, yeah, probably. But I can already smell it. Can you see it? Are they true? Well, those are briquettes. Those you buy them, those are the barbecue grilling that come in a bag. But you can actually make a fire with wood, and then you can make pieces of coal. Oh, about this size, on this size right here, you can use those. But you also have to be careful what wood you use, because if you use hardwood, then it will burn longer. If you use woods that are not hardwood, it's going to burn quick, and it's not going to give you the heat you need to cook your food. Okay? So. You have to know, when you're building a fire, when you go in the woods and look for firewood to build a fire, you don't want um, rotten wood. You, you want wood that is, what? Solid. Solid, solid. It's solid. Not green, not, not something you just chop down, but solid. Yes, pure. So when we do, um, when we do firewood cutting at home, for example, if you think you're going to move to your country properly, I'm going to find a snake. <laughs> when you move to your country property and you think, oh, okay, well, I don't need it. I don't need gas or nothing because I'm going to go get wood, I'm going to chop trees, and I'm going to get wood, and quick, you know, but it's winter. Think again. It takes how long for the winter season? Three years is your highest BTU. Yeah. How long? Three years for it to secure? For the wood to season. Your highest BTU. Yeah, I would put this with BTU. As if, as if you have an oak tree. If you, if if you, you have an oak tree and you cut tree. it, it's about three years. Three years. So you can burn it in a year, but you're going to have more creosote problems in your chimney. It's not going to burn as hot. Uh, and you can take down dead trees, right? Does that reduce it? I usually take down dead or un unhealthy trees. Is usually what we take down. Three years after you, you, you cut it, can you, can you, you split it, it and you put it away. Stack it? Yeah, I split two, it. Two, three anyway. years. Oh, yeah, three years. For the wood old. to be ready to use. So, and the they, first two years we live in a property, we have to buy wood. The one. So, that's another reason to move as quick as possible. Oh, you have a chimney? Yes, we have a wood food store. It's not too bad, but it's not. It's too caliente la casa. Most of that's. Most of that, unless they're running some down dead, some down wood, some dead wood. They're seasoning for about a year to sell them. And it burns okay. I told you, it's all those beautiful people. Your shoelaces. <laughs> and don't worry, Sylvia. <laughs> Sylvia, the, the snake left when he started bringing the wood over here. How many hogs okay. do you have to keep it? Oh, that's finished. That's oh, that's good. been finished. No, it's, no, they hold. Smelling really good. Back oh, there. you just have to make sure this doesn't get blocked with wood. It has to be able to air get through. Like it has That's one hole here and one little, on the other Little hole on this side. If you look on this bigger. side, it's a big hole for putting the wood in. 
see the big hole for putting the wood in? Yeah, that's where we're putting the wood in. I just stick this in the other side to make sure the wood doesn't block the, the, this little hole. Because if you block the little hole, it won't burn well. No, I'm just keep putting wood in here to keep this warm, that's all. Some strokes, they have the hole underneath. They get the Oh, yes. And I remember the first time when I watched them do this when I went to the camp, I think I timed it and it was about 15 or 20 minutes from the time she started building this to the time that that was hot. It was it was less than it was less than 30 minutes. It was like 20 Yeah. And then it was hot. So. And that was that was in the fall, so that wasn't hot weather. So did anybody notice what time we, we put this? He's timing you. Okay. How much longer do we have? <laughs> Who's timing? Oh, okay. I forgot to put the timer. Set the timer. You got 15 minutes down. 15? Okay. Down? You've done 15 so minutes. So we have 45 minutes. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Besides soap and water, is there a special way to clean the Dutch oven? Thank you. Some people say you're not supposed to use soap. I use soap on mine um, sometimes. Uh, there's a little scrubby that they sell. I didn't bring mine. A little scrubby they sell, especially for that. It's right on Amazon. Um, let me see what's called. Have you seen the, the key rings? The rings on the key rings, that, that stainless steel ring? Okay, it's made of those. It's a bunch of them. It's like a chain. It's like a little mat like that. And that's what you scrub it with. Uh, or they sell a little scraper, especially for that too. So you scrape it, and I just immediately, you don't leave them wet draining. Immediately you wash it, you dry it really good, and you put oil on top, on the bottom, outside, everywhere. Just a little bit, a little a napkin with oil, and you just oil it and you store it. And they, you keep them beautiful. Now, Lodge, the brand Lodge, they already come seasoned. If it's not a Lodge brand, they don't, they, they're not seasoned. You may go to, um, yard sale and you may find one that looks like that um, and, and you may find something like that and people say well that thing i only want five bucks for it get it pick it up these things are not cheap yeah so i bought some for three bucks or five bucks and i pick them up because you know somebody's gonna need it if i don't so what you do if you find something like that a rusty what you do is you um first if it has cake stuff to it like, like people fry you know, stuff in it. You wanna um, scrub it really good with a with a, a stainless steel steel mat, wool, yeah. steel wood, and all that. And then you wanna oil it really good. Some people say they use lard, Crisco. I don't. I, I put oil and, and everything. So oil, and then you put an you do an open fire, a campfire, and you put that on top and you burn it. Then you flip it the other way. You burn it until it's black on both sides. Then you take it out, then you do the other part, you know, the, the, the bottom part. You do the same thing. And then you wash it, you dry it, you oil it, and you burn it again. And you will have one looking just like that wow. pan right there. For three or five bucks. But if you go buy... You burn it black. Yes, until it's black. Wow. That, 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 that means it's, it's um, pure. Seasoned. Oh, okay. Seasoned. But lodge already comes seasoned. Okay. We bought these at the lodge. Uh, outlet store and there were seconds and i think we gave 40 or 50 dollars they were used no no they're they oh, okay. but they were seconds oh, okay yeah. and and 20 dollars a piece for the lids they're they're fairly if, if you buy a lid and a pot i think it's a hundred dollars yeah. wow that's not a seconds from lodge Second. that's directly at lodge some, can some you explain what seconds mean yeah seconds Seconds just means that at the end of their manufacturing process, that some little part of it wasn't exactly perfect, and so they're not going to put their put it in a brand new box and send it to the store. So they sell it a little cheaper. They sell it as a second. And there's lots of places I bought I bought knives, you know, little knives, you know, pocket knives and stuff that way. There's lots of places that do that. Okay, so I have, I have too many of these pots and pans. You know, many of those I found at yard sales and thrift stores for three, five bucks, eight bucks at the most. 
because people buy them and then they get rusty and they say, forget this. It's ruined and, and they throw them away, they give them away. So you pick them up, you, you do the process I just explained. Wow. Yeah. Buy them because you won't be able to find the stuff. During COVID, there was a lot of things that we wanted to order, like a water filter. The Berkey a water filter, they were out of stock. A bunch of stuff was out of stock. You won't be able to get it. So these are things that you can get now and have them for when you move out and you have them ready. You don't have to. And know. even if you can find old brands, Wagner, I mean, any, any iron pretty much, if you pick it up and it's a big skillet, it's real lightweight, then it's probably not that good. But, but Wagner. Just make sure it's not cracked. Just make sure it's not cracked. Griswold. There are several manufacturers, but that was two of the most popular ones. And a lot of people collect them. They're very expensive, but sometimes you can pick them up for a little or nothing. You usually, as some folks may know, uh, y'all know about, you know quite a bit about cast iron. The old Wagners and Griswold stuff. You usually find pans and pots, but you can't hardly find the lids. And that's because most of those were pre-World War II. So during World War II, they did the iron drive. They would come door to door and ask if you had, they come to your doorstep and say, do you have scrap metal? Do you have anything? And the women wouldn't give up their pot. They'd say, here's a lid, you know, I want to help. And they'd give them a lid, but they wouldn't give them their pot. So that's why the lids are very rare and the old ones. And they're actually valuable. Uh, they're worth, worth money. Can you make bread? Regular type of bread? Yes, you can yeah, make you bread. Can. You can cook anything on this. You can make bread, your whole loaf or small. Smaller ones, you can make a cake, you can make soup, lasagna. I mean, anything that you can do in an oven, you can do that. How you make lasagna over there? Well, you do, you, you put your layers, you put your sauce, your, you know, just your regular sauce. You just put it in the pot and then the briquettes are going to be according to the size of your pan. What was that? Let me test. If you have a 12 inch, this is, this is a 12 inch Dutch oven. If you have a 12 inch, how many briquettes do you need? 24. How many are going to go in the bottom? One third, which is eight of them are going to go in the bottom. Then the other three quarters are going to go on top. Right here. So for this one, I needed 24 more, but because I'm, I'm using, I'm taking advantage of this one, I only put how many on top? Okay. The one third. Okay? And then we can stack more. I could have brought a 10 inch and put it on top and cook probably bread. You know, something like that. Yeah. My question is, would you use those on the rocket stove? No. Well, you, these with the legs on them, no. But, but yes, if you wanted to cook a pot of soup on the rocket stove in one of these pots, yes, you could. You can, but you have to use a pot like, like that, that one, one that doesn't have legs in the bottom. What's your, what's your recommended stack limit? Yes. Yeah. How many have you stacked yeah, in regards to the pot? Four. Four? Yeah. Four, so you can put the 14 inch in the bottom, mm. two 14 and inches, and you can put a 12 mm. inch, and you can put a 10 inch. And, and, I mean, I can smell that bread. I don't know if you can smell that. Yeah. Smell that bread. Okay. Smell good. <laughs> so, when you can't buy the briquettes, can you make your own? Yes. Yeah, yeah. charcoal. Just fire. Just, just, just do it. And then just count. And we said the wood has a lot to do with it, right? If you use hardwood, it's gonna cook even. If you're not, if you're not using a hardwood to make it, then you will have to put more charcoal, or you put something to cook. Last year I went to visit Kenya, um, and I found a family living in a very cold area. They made their own briquettes with ashes yeah. and some clay and something else that I forget. And they wet them and they compress them and then they dry and they them. Make them and then they dry them. See that? That's the banana bread. Banana bread? Yeah. We're losing heat. It's not ready. It's not ready. You can smell. You can look. <laughs> and what is in the bottom? It's not ready. It's already smells well along here. Dollar piece. Just pay me out for him. Sister Sylvia, what is in the bottom? Uh, potatoes. Cube. Cube potatoes. Uh, with rosemary, olive oil, garlic, onions. Now we're cooking it mm. so it's cooking. Yeah. with fire so instead of with propane. It doesn't seem that it's, it's a lot of heat. Yeah. Yeah.
The smell of just wood burning is so much. Yeah. They're going to show us how to. I'm a firefighter, so I end up smelling a lot of different. And believe me. Wood burning smells good compared to people burning trash or whatever, or a, a real house fire or whatever kind of fires that you. How did you get these up?